Let's look at the solutions of quality called questions, a series in which we come up with 20 different questions on a particular topic. And uh, I solve it. The shield is available to you six days in advance. So hopefully you've solved it by now when you're watching this video. Let's start with the solution of the first question. The terms of an arithmetic progression are all positive. The square of the fourth term equals the sum of squares of the previous two terms. Sum of the first four terms is 14. Find the common difference. Okay. Let the four terms be a, a plus d, a plus 2d, and a plus 3d. This is how you, this is the standard notation for first four terms of an AP. Now we are told square of the fourth term equals the sum of squares of the previous two terms. A plus d whole square has to be equal to, previous two terms are a plus 2d and a plus d. A a plus D whole square plus A plus 2D whole square. This we know. So we can break it down as, we can break it down as, uh, how much? A square plus 9D square plus 6AD is equal to A square plus d square and 4 d square, so 5 d square plus 2 ad plus 4 ad, 6 ad, so 6 ad and 6 ad cancelled. This a square comes here, this 5 d square goes here. So we have a square is equal to 4 d square. Remember, both of these are positive because all the terms of the arithmetic progression are all positive. So this will be uh, a is equal to 2 d. We can take the positive square roots on both sides. A is equal to 2D. If A is equal to 2D, the series that we have now is 2D, 3D, 4D, and 5D. The next piece of information is the sum of the first four terms is 14. 14D is equal to 40, or D is directly equal to 1, which is the answer to this question. This is what the question was seeking. Okay. Next one. Find the number of terms common to the progressions 7, 11, 15, so on and so forth, up until 495, and 1, 6, 11, 16, so on and so forth, up until 500. On. Now look at the first series. It is 7, 11, 15, so on and so forth, up until 495. Just looking at this series, can you see the common difference? The terms are increasing by the same margin, and the common difference is 4, which is to say, the general term for this series, nth term for this series will be given by 4n plus 3. n, when it is 1, it will give me 7. When it is 2, it will give me 11. When it is 3, it will give me 15. So on and so forth. So the first term is 4 into 1 plus 3. And the last term here is 492 plus 3. 492 divided by 3. 4 into 123. Plus three. This is where this starts. This is where this ends. There are one twenty three terms in this series. Okay. Let us look at the second series. Second series is one, six, eleven, sixteen, so on and so forth up until five hundred one. Now the nth term for this series is. See, the first term and the second term have a difference of 5. Second term and third term have a difference of 5. Third term and fourth term have a difference of 5. Everybody have a difference of 5. So the nth term will be given by 5n minus 4. 5n minus 4. Okay. Now, we can write it as 5 into 1 minus 4. And then 5 into 2 minus 4. 5 into 3 minus 2. So on and so forth. So 5 into 101 minus 4. There are 101 terms in this subsequent 6. Okay. Either thing is fine. Understand, in this series, we are taking jumps of 4. In this series, we are taking jumps of 5. The first common term that we can see the first common term that we can see is 11. The first common term that we can see is 11. Now, and I'm looking for the next common term. 
it should be present after jumps of 4 from 11. If I take some jumps of 4, it should be present in this series. And it should also be present in this series after I take jumps of 5. So if I'm taking jumps of 4 and I'm also taking jumps of 5, in order to arrive at some destination number, the gap between this number can be covered in jumps of 4 also. Can this gap can also be covered in jumps of 5. Hopefully, you can see the gap between these two numbers will simply be LCM of 4 and 5 or the next number is going to be 31. See if 31 will fit here at n equal to 7 and at n equal to 7. Yes, 31 most definitely fits. 31 most definitely fits. So, now, now that 31 fits, now that 31 fits, can I say if 11 is identified, the next term will be 31, the next term will be again 20 forward 51, then 71, then 91, so on and so forth, it will keep on going. And in this series, hopefully you can identify this series that we have created, the last term, the last term that is going to be identified is going to be some odd number ending in 1, it will be 491. See, everything is 1. And then the numbers in front of 1 are odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 91, 101, 131, so on and so forth. So the last number before 495 and the 501, which will have 1 in the end, and the first two digits will form an odd number, is going to be 491. We have to identify how many terms are there in this series. How many terms are there in this series? We can go on to write this series as 20n minus 9. The first term is 20 into 1 minus 9. Next term is 20 into 2 minus 9. Next term is 20 into 3 minus 9. And this last term here is 20 into 25 minus 9. So from 1 to 25, how many terms are common to both these series? It will be 25 terms. Okay. Next question this is also fun. What is the 2015th term of a sequence of natural numbers written in ascending order that does not have any perfect squares? Okay. So essentially we are counting, but we have to remove perfect squares from record. So 2005, oh sorry, 2015, if I do the square, it will be 44 point something something. It will be 44 point something something. So, from 1 to 2015, 1 to 2015, I have 2015 numbers, but because there are 44 perfect squares in the I have to remove 44 numbers, I have to remove 44 numbers, and therefore from 1 to 2015, how many numbers are there? 2015 minus 44, 29 gone. So, 1, 9, 6, 1. So far, I have 1961 numbers. But I don't need 1961 numbers. I need 44 more numbers. I need 44 more numbers. So let me go 44 further. If I go 44 further, from 201 size, if I go 44 further, I will get to 2059. 44 further, I will go to 2059. But this is 44 further. If I go 44 further, I will get to 2050. But in this range, is there a new perfect square that is coming in? Yes, very much so. Somewhere in this range is a 2025, which is equal to 45 square. And this will be removed from the list. So when I go from 2015 to 2059, I've only gone 43 further. In order to go 44 further, I have to go even further. I have to repeat 2060. The 2015th term in a sequence of natural numbers written in ascending order that does not have any perfect squares, the 2015th term will be 206C. Okay. Next question. The sum of n terms of two series in AP are in the ratio 7n minus 17 and 4n plus 16. Find the common ratio of the 21st terms. Now, a very good good useful piece of advice. 
whenever we are talking about sums, what is useful is the middle term. The sum of an AP, sum of n terms of an AP is n into the middle term, number of terms into the middle term. Now, here finally what we need is find the ratio of the 21st terms, but the ratio given is for the sum. So how can we find the ratio of the 21st term? If I make the 21st term, the middle term, if 21st term is the middle term, 20 terms are prior to it, 20 terms are after it. So when I'm seeking sum of 41 terms, when I'm seeking sum of 41 terms, the middle term will be the 21st term or sum of n terms, n replaced by 41, in this ratio will do the trick. So I will have 7 into 41 minus 70 by 4 into 41 plus 16. 7 into 41 will be 27 minus 17 is 270. And 4 into 41 is 164 plus 16 is 180. Or the final ratio obtained will be 3 by 2 or option A will be the right answer. The you have to identify is finally ratio of 21st term, 21st terms. There are 21st terms. I will need sum up till 41 terms. Let's say if the question had been if I need ratio of their 19th terms, then I would need to replace n with 37. 19th term is the middle term, 18 prior to it, 18 after it, 18 plus 18 plus 1. So for 37 terms, then I would have to replace n with 37. If I was seeking ratio for let's say their 72nd term. Ratio of the 72nd terms. Then 71 prior to it, 71 after it, one term in between. So I will be replacing n with 143. This is how this working happens. Very standard question thing. Everyone should be aware of this. Okay. Next question. Find the sum of all integers from 1 to 300 that are divisible either by 3 or 5. Okay. Now see here. The challenge is numbers that are divisible by 3 we can happily get. Prior to doing all the maths, I want to see this sum of numbers divisible by 3 will be 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18 plus uh, 21 plus 24, so on and so forth, all the way up until 294 plus 297 plus 300. And this is a normal AP. We can find out the sum, no problem at all. There is also sum of numbers divisible by 5 will be 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus so on and so forth all the way up until 285 plus 290 plus 295 plus 300. This is also in simple AP you can find out. The challenge occurs if there are going to be some numbers. See, we are looking for numbers that are divisible by 3 or 5. A number like 15 poses a challenge. Because if I find out some of this series, first series, 15 is included there. If I find out some of the second series, 15 is also included here. And what is this 15? It is basically LCM of 3 and 5. 15 is coming in both these series. So, from whatever, let's say the result that I get here is A, and the result that I get here is B, I will need to calculate sum of numbers divisible by 15. 15 plus 30 plus 45 plus 60 all the way up until 285 plus 300. My final answer is going to be num sum of numbers divisible by 3 plus sum of numbers divisible by 5 minus sum of numbers divisible by 15. Not because numbers divisible by 15 are not to be counted. It is because 
numbers divisible by 15 have been counted twice. They have been counted in the series for three also. They have been counted in the series for five also. They have been counted twice. And therefore, I need to remove one iteration of them. Now, the maths of this is fairly straightforward. Three times of sum of first 100 natural numbers. One plus two plus three, so on and so forth, up until 100. So, this will be three into 100 into 101 divided by two, which is... 150 into 101, which is 150, 0, 0, plus 150, or 1550. Okay. Here, if I take out 5 common from each of the terms, this has 60 terms, 30 divided by 5 is 60. So, 1 plus 2 plus 3, so on and so forth, up until 60 we will get. So this will be 5 into 60 into 61 divided by 2. So this will be 150 into 61. I shouldn't have multiplied it entirely. 150 into 61 is good enough. I will stop it here. And here it will be 15 times of 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up until 20. So, this will be equal to 15 into 20 into 21 by 2. Cancel this. And get 150 into 21. And this is nice. I have to add these two and subtract. So, I can directly subtract this and get 150 into 40. 150 into 40 will give me 60 followed by 20 zeros, 60 followed by 2 zeros. So my final answer is going to be 15150 plus 6000 or the total answer is 21150. This should be the answer to the question. Okay. Next, there are 30 terms in an arithmetic progression. The second and third terms are distinct integers. So they are different. It's not a constant type B. The common difference is not zero. The ratio of the sum of the first 20 terms and sum of the first 10 terms equals twice the ratio of the second and the first terms. Which of the following can be the sum of all its terms? Yeah. There are 30 terms. So the first term is A. Second term is A plus D. Third term is A plus 2D. And so on and so forth. We will keep on going up until A plus 29D. 30 terms are this way. Now, ratio of sum of first 20 terms. First 20 terms. First 20 terms should be given by 20 by 2. 2a plus 19d. This will be the sum of first 20 terms. And ratio of first 10 terms is 10 by 2. 2a plus 9d. This is the ratio of the first 20 terms and ratio of the first 10 terms. And this is twice the ratio of second and the first term. Second and the first term. Okay. So A plus 2D by A. Sorry, not A plus 2D. A plus D by A. Or let me not write it this way. Let me write it as 2a plus 2d by a. Okay. This will give me a relationship between a and d. Okay. I will cancel this, cancel this, cancel this, cancel this, get to 2. I will have 2a into 2a, 4a square plus 2a into 19d plus 38d, 38ad equal to 2a into 2a is 4a square 4a square 2a into 2d and 90 into 2a 2a into 2d is 4ad 90 into 2 is 22 ad plus 18 
D squared. This is what we reached. So this and this will get cancelled. Okay. Now, because I know the second and the third terms are distinct, I know D is not zero. So I can cancel out D from every term also. So D is gone, D is gone, and D is gone, which gives me 18D is equal to 16A or D by A is equal to 8 by 9. D by A is equal to 8 by 9. Okay. So if I look at my first term, it is 9K. My second term is 17K. My third term is 25K. So on and so forth. And 29 into 8. 29 into 8 is 232. 232 plus 9 is 232 plus 9 is 241K. So my sum, see the last term is 241K. So my middle term is 9K plus 241K by 2. This is my middle term. And number of terms available are 30. 9K plus 41K by 2. This is my middle term. And number of terms available are 30. So from here I will get 125k into 30 or 3750k. My final answer has to be a multiple of 3750 among the available options. Among the available options, the only one that fits is option D. Therefore, this will be the final answer. Okay. Next question. Three numbers. 5 plus x, 5x plus 1 and 8x form an increasing arithmetic progression. Which is to say common difference is positive. If they form an increasing arithmetic progression, we can happily solve for x. Twice the middle term is sum of the two adjacent numbers. So 10x plus 2 is equal to 9x plus 5 or x is equal to 3. So the three numbers in the AP are 8 and 16 and 24. Great. If the third term is divided by 6, third term is divided by 6, 24 by 6 will get 24. The resulting number and the first and second terms in of the arithmetic progression taken in an order would be G. So 4, 8 and 16. Yes, this is a GP. Find the common ratio. The common ratio clearly is 2. 4 into 2 gets me to 8. 8 into 16 gets 8 into 2 gets me to 16. So the common ratio here is 2. Yeah. Next question. We have find the integer value of y if minus x, 2y, 2y plus 3 are in AP, and x plus 2, 2y plus 1, and 5y minus 1 are in GP. Okay. Based on AP GP, I can simply write down twice the middle term. 4y is equal to 2y plus 6 minus x or 2y is equal to 6 minus x or x is equal to 6 minus 2y. Let me put that down. This is from the AP relation. Now from the GP relation, the square of the middle term, the square of the middle term should be equal to product of the extrema. So I have... 4 into y plus 1 whole square should be equal to x plus 2, which is 6 minus 2y plus 2 into 5y minus 1. Absolutely wonderful. So let's work our magic further. You will get 4 times of y square plus 8y plus 4 is equal to, this is 8 minus 2y, let me write it as 8 minus 2y. So multiplication is easier to accomplish. Minus 10y square 
Bringing over everything to the left hand side, I have 14y square minus 34 by plus 12 is equal to 0. I can get rid of those. 7y square minus 17 by plus 6 is equal to 0. Now 7 into 6 gives me 56. 56 broken down into two numbers that add up to 17 is 49 into 3. No. 56. It is 7 into 6 is 42. 42 broken down into two numbers is 14 into 3. So yes. 7 by square minus 14 by minus 3 by plus 6 is equal to 0. So you get 7 by by minus 2 minus 3 by minus 2 equal to 0. So 7 by minus 3 and by minus 2 is equal to 0, which tells us y is equal to 2 or y is equal to 3 by 7. We only wanted the integral value of y. So integral value of y will be 2. Okay. Next. If the second, fifth, and ninth term of a non-constant AD are in GP, in the common ratio of the genes. Second term will be a plus d. Fifth term will be a plus 4d. And ninth term will be ninth term will be a plus 8d. What we are told is product of these two is equal to square of the middle one. Square of the middle one gives me a square plus 8ad plus 16d square is equal to a square 8ad plus ad so plus 9ad plus how much 8d square so a square and a square is gone i can get rid of d everywhere i can get rid of d everywhere because i know it is a non constant p which means d is not equal to zero. So d gone from here, d gone from here, d gone from here, d gone from here. So I will have 8d equal to a. 8d is equal to a, or a is equal to 8d. Which will mean this term will become 9d. This term will become 12d. This term will become 16d. So common ratio of the gt will be 12d by 9d or the common ratio will be 12 by 9 which is equal to 4 by 3 or option A will be the right answer. Okay. Next question. A is an arithmetic progression of 13 terms. G is a geometric progression of 13 terms. The product of terms of G is 8192. The product of terms of A is 20. The sum of Terms of A is 26. Find the sum of the seventh terms of A and G. Absolutely wonderful. See, when I'm looking at sum of 13 terms, sum of 13 terms, it will be 30 number of terms into the middle term. And middle term for 13 terms is going to be the seventh term only. 13 into seventh term. This is for AP. 13 into 7th term is equal to 26 or the 7th term is equal to 2. For the AP, the 7th term is going to be equal to 2. Similarly, now look at GP. For the GP, middle term raised to the power number of terms is equal to product of all terms. So middle term here is the seventh term. So seventh term raised to the power 13 equal to product of all the terms of G, which is 8192, which a little familiarity will let you to lead you to 
This is two raised to the power thirteen only. Every one of us uh, hopefully at one point or the other played the game two zero four eight. Two zero four eight the mobile application. Two zero four eight is two raised to the power eleven. Then you have four zero nine six, which is two raised to the power twelve, and then you have eight one nine two, which is two raised to the power thirty, which tells us the seventh term of the GP is also equal to. So now the wonderful thing is find the sum of the seventh term of A and G. You have two from here. You have two from here. The answer to the question. For next now, and this is what is known as a second degree AP. Let's see. Find the hundredth term of this series. One, five, eleven, nineteen, twenty-nine, forty-one. Here, it seems like the difference itself is increasing by some margin. The difference here is 4. The difference here is 6. The difference here is 8. The difference here is 10. The difference here is 12. And so on. So on. This in itself is an AP. So what we do here is, what we do here is, see, Difference here is two. Difference here is two. Difference here is two. Difference here is two. So how we go about solving it is if the double differentiation, if the double difference leads to a constant, the standard, the standard term or the nth term for this given series will be a quadratic term a n square plus b n plus c. This will be the standard term. Now. What is the double differentiation of this expression leads me to two. First differentiation leads me to 2an plus b. The second double differentiation leads me to 2a. Can you see that double differentiated outcome is 2? Which means 2a is 2. Which tells me n has to be 1. Or sorry, a has to be 1. I can directly jump to a being 1. I can directly jump to a being 1. Okay. Next, let me look at bn plus c, bn plus c. If I can go from first term to second term to third term to fourth term, I should also be able to go from fourth term to third term to second term, first term to zeroth term. If I want to go to zeroth term, can you see this difference will remain constant? So this will be 2. So what number? What number is 2 away from 1? That number is minus 1. This is the 0th term. Why is this interesting? If this is the 0th term, this is also the constant. If I plug in n equal to 0, n square will be 0, bn will be 0, c is minus 1. I can quickly identify c is minus 1. And now, and now my expression has reduced to n square. There is just one unknown b n minus one. Now, if I plug in n equal to one, if I plug in n equal to one, I should be arriving at one only. So I'll have one plus e minus one is equal to one. One plus b minus one is equal to one, which gives me b is equal to one, which gives me the standard for the standard nth term for this series is given by n square plus n minus 1. Now see, because this is a fairly popular series. It's a fairly popular series. Many people have solved, I'm sure if you practice sufficiently, you would have solved this already in your solving practice. And you would have arrived here anyway. But I wanted to go through this long drawn process so that, you know, this long drawn process will work for any question, will work for any series which has difference of difference constant. Any series which has difference of difference constant, this long drawn process will work there everywhere. So now that I know my nth term is given by n square plus n minus 1, I simply need the hundredth term. So it will be 100 square plus 100 minus 1, so plus 99. Or the final answer will be 1 double 0 double 9. The answer to the question is just to reinforce this idea into your head once more. 
we are also going to do this. See here, the series, the difference is 9. The difference is 13. The difference is 17. The difference is 21. The difference is 25. And second level differentiation gets me to 4, 4, 4, and 4. So we know standard notation of this series will be a n square plus b n plus c. I also know a will be equal to 2, 2a is equal to 4, so a will be equal to 2. I can also go back, 4 back from this, x me to 5, some number with 1 gives 5 ahead of some number is 1. So that number itself should be minus 4. So c is minus 4. I have 2 n square and minus 4. Let me plug in n equal to 1. If I plug in n equal to 1, I get 2 plus b minus 4 is equal to 1, which tells me b should be equal to 3. So my standard notation or my nth term for this series is given by 2n square plus 3n minus 1. Now, whenever you arrive at this, because this is a fairly popular series, I did not waste time in confirming. But here, this is not a fairly popular series. So here, what you should be doing, once you arrive at this point, see the process up until this point is fairly complex and it requires a certain degree of skill and practice. So, if you are doing it for the first time or even if you have not done it, let's say, 150 times over, what you should be doing after you arrive at this general term is plug in the value of n as 4. C, are you getting 40? If you are getting 40, then this then this is peachy, this is golden, nothing wrong with it. But if you are not getting 40, then you need to go back and do all the work all over again. So let me check 2 into n square will get me to 32. Plus, sorry, this is minus 4 now. Plus 3n will get me to 12. Minus 4 will get me to 40 indeed. So yes, this is absolutely fine. This general term identification is absolutely fine. Okay. Now let me do summation. Let me do summation of this. It will be two times of n square summation is given by n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. Whole thing divided by 6 plus 3 into n into n plus 1 divided by 2 minus 4 times of n. This will be the summation up till n terms. And we have been told that n terms here is 20. So we will replace it 2 into 20 into 21 into 41 by 6 plus 3 into 20 into 21 by 2 minus 4 into 20. Now see, this processing you can do by a calculator, but we don't have access to a calculator. Then how do we process? I prefer doing it this way. See, I see 20, 20, 20 every time. I also see a 6 and a 2. So I will try to get this down to this becomes 2, this becomes 7, fine. This will become 10, absolutely wonderful. This will become 10, absolutely wonderful. And I will rewrite this as 8 into 10. I will take 10 out common. Once I take 10 out common, I am left with 41 into 7. So 287, 287 into 2. 287 into 2 will get me to 574. I will have 574 plus 3 into 21, 63. Minus 8. 63 minus 8 gets me to 55. Okay. So I have 26 plus 29. 10 into 629. Or my final answer will be 6290. Of course, you can have your own ways of processing. You can directly come to precise value of this, precise value of this, and precise value of this. Then so it is just that I like taking terms out common.
because it enables me to do my work slightly more in a more relaxed way. Okay, the answer to this question is of course six to nine. Next question. The sum of an infinite geometric series of real numbers is 14. The sum of cubes of the terms of the series is 392. Find the first term, then the first term of the series. Okay. Let's see. This GP will be A, AR, AR square, AR cube, AR raised to the power 4, so on and so forth. Now, sum of this will be given by A divided by 1 minus R. This is told to us as 14. Now, cubes of the terms will be A cube, A cube, R cube, A cube, R raised to the power 6, A cube, R raised to the power 9, so on and so forth. And summation of this will be given by A cube by 1 minus R cube. This is equal to 392. Okay. Now, from here, what we need to do or what we need to work with is I can replace A with 10 times of 1 minus R. Bring it over here. I have 14 times of 1 minus R whole cube. by 14 cube, 1 minus r whole cube, by much 1 minus r cube equal to 392. Now, 392 is 196 into 2. So, 14 square I can cancel. This will become 2. This will become 14. This will go. This will go. This will become 7. So, I bring 1 minus r cube is equal to 7 times of 1 minus r cube minus 3r plus 3r square. Why am I going down this path? I think it's almost as if I'm going to oh, no, 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 r cube will not go away. r cube will continue to stay. Let me not do this then. This process doesn't seem very efficient. Let me do this then. I can do this. This divided by this. But then, then A will remain. A will remain. How do I work with that then? Oops. I think I'll have to put up this box. This. Let's bring back all my numbers. Two. So what? Plus 3R square. So I'll have 1 minus R cube. Oh, I should have done this earlier. I have 7 times of 1 minus r cube. 1 minus r whole cube is equal to 1 minus r into 1 plus r plus r square. This I should have done. And then I can get rid of this and I can make this too, which will make my life slightly easier. Now I'll have to deal with only a quadratic. So absolutely fun now. Let me open it up. 7 times of 1 plus r square minus 2r is equal to 1 plus r plus r square. 7 plus 7r square minus 15r is equal to 1 plus r plus r square. Let me bring stuff over. It will become 6r square. Minus 15R minus 6 is equal to 0. I can get rid of 3's. So, I will have 2R square minus 5R minus 
फाइव प्लस सिक्स इट विल बी प्लस टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज इजली हैंडलेबल दिस विल बी टू आर स्क्वेर माइनस फोर आर माइनस आर प्लस टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो टू आर आर माइनस टू माइनस वन आर माइनस टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो विच गिवस एस आर इज इक्वल टू हाफ और आर इज इक्वल टू टू and now this is a very critical point for you to understand a very critical point for you to understand if this is an infinite geometric series and you are able to calculate summation if you are able to calculate summation it implies the common ratio has to be less than 1 the common ratio has to be less than 1 if it was it has to be within the range minus 1 to 1 if it was greater than minus 1 It will continue to be a bigger negative number, a bigger negative number, and your sum will tend towards negative infinity. If it was a bigger number than one positive side, it will become bigger from the previous term, bigger from the previous term, and your summation will turn tend towards positive infinity. The fact that we are able to arrive at a mathematical answer here implies that R has to be less than one, which means R has to be half. Finally, the question asks me first term of the series, so I will have A is equal to Ten into half will be equal to seven, or the answer to the question will be option C. Okay, yes. let's go. Find the sum of the following series. Let's break this down. First term is one plus one by six. Second term is one plus one by twelve. Third term is one plus One by twenty plus one plus one by thirty, so on and so forth, all the way up until one plus one by ninety-nine hundred. Now the key to solving this further is first identify how many terms are there. I have broken down the first term into two parts, second term into two parts, third term into two parts, fourth term into two parts, and next term into two parts. How do you identify how many terms are here? You perhaps get from this C. The six is two into three, twelve is three into four, twenty is four into five, and thirty is five into six. So when I come all the way up until ninety nine hundred, this is ninety nine into hundred. We started at two, and we gone up till ninety nine. How many terms are here? Ninety-eight terms are. Here. We have precisely ninety-eight terms available. We have precisely ninety-eight terms available. So my summation will be ninety-eight plus one by six plus one by twelve plus one by twenty. In fact, let me not write it this way. Let me write it in this fashion only. Two into three plus one by three into four. Plus one by four into five, plus one by five into six, so on and so forth, all the way up until plus one by ninety nine into hundred. Now, here we use a cancellation technique, which some people mistakenly label as partial fractions. Partial fractions is an entirely different idea altogether in higher mathematics. That I remember from class twelve, as in I know the name of from class twelve, but I have absolutely no clue what it is. Yeah? But how do I break this down? See, there is nothing available for HPs. There is nothing. So there are ingenious cancellation techniques that you can use. One of them is if I break this down as one by two minus one by three. Yes, then. One by two minus one by three does give me one by two into three, so it is fine. Here I will get one by three minus one by four. For the next term, I will get one by four minus one by five. Then I will get one by five minus one by six, and it will go on till one by ninety nine. Minus one by hundred. No problem at all. The ninety-eight and the beginning definitely remains. Now see the negative part 
of the first term and the positive part of the second term cancel each other out minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. Negative part of the second term, positive part of the third term cancel each other out. Negative part of the third term and positive part of the fourth term cancel each other out. Or can you see every intermediate term will get cancelled except positive part of the first and negative part of the last. So my final calculation, my final working will get reduced to 98 plus half minus 1 by 100, which will be equal to 98 plus 49 by 100. This 50%, this is 1%, 49% is left. Or if I were to combine this, I'll get 9849 by 100, which is given by option B. This sequence of number 6, 12, 20, 30, something that everyone should be able to recognize if you've done series and sequences. Okay. Now, this is another one of those breakages idea. How do you get around to breaking stuff? How do you get around to breaking stuff? Okay. See, again, you have to break it down into terms. You have to break it down into terms that it makes sense, that it is sensible. How do we do it? We take terms like this. Look at this. If I take 1 by 3, 1 into 1 by 3 minus 1 into sorry, 3 into 5, what will I get? What will I get? I will get 3 is common. I will have 5 minus 1 by 1 into 3 into 5. This will get me to 4 by 1 into 3 into 5. 4 by 1 into 3 into 5. And this is not great. I did not want this. I did not want this. I wanted 1 by 1 into 3 into 5. So as an adjustment, I will have to introduce a 1 by 4 on the outside. In order to get to 1 by 1 into 3 into 5, I will introduce an adjustment of 1 by 4 on the outside. This works. This is perfectly all right. Let us do the same working for the second one. Can you see 1 by 3 into 5 minus 1 by 5 into 7 will get me to 7 minus 3 by 3 into 5 into 7, which again gets me to 4 by 3 into 5 into 7. But I did not want this. I wanted one fourth of this. So I will introduce another adjustment 1 by 4. I will be left with 1 by 3 into 5 minus. 1 by 5 into 7. This is perfectly all right. And by now, hopefully, the hack of breaking this down is apparent to us. The next term we'll directly write at 1 by 4. 1 by 5 into 7 minus 1 by 7 into 9. This will go all the way up until 1 by 4. 1 by 95 into 97 minus 1 by 97 into 99. The absolutely wonderful thing is, you see, negative part of the first term, positive part of the first term, oh, sorry, second term, negative part of the second term, positive part of the third term. Every intermediate term gets cancelled except positive part of the first and negative part of the last. So I have 1 by 4 on the outside and we left with 1 by 3 minus 1 by, this is 97 into 99, so 9700 minus 97, 9700 minus 97, 9603, a very good indication of this is also available in the options. Let's see, already present here. So, uh, 9603, so 1, sorry. 3201 1 by 4 of 3201 minus 1 by 9603 which will get us to 3200 by 4 into 9603 this 4 can cancel with this give me final answer of 800 by 9603 
but this final manipulation is not the game. The game is how do you break it down? How do you break it up so that some terms cancel each other? Up? Then that is the same thing we learned here. That is the same thing we learned here. Hopefully, you have practiced it sufficiently. Okay, let's look at this now. Consider the sequence of numbers a1, a2, a3 to infinity, where a1 is this, a2 is this, and aj is equal to aj minus 1 minus aj minus 2 for j greater than equal to. What is the sum of the first 6002 terms of the sequence? Now, the first trigger that should come to your head is of course, this question does not expect you to calculate all 6002 terms. This question does not expect you to calculate 6002 terms. Which it what implies what is expected here is you would see some sort of pattern emerging in the numbers, some sort of pattern emerging in the numbers, and therefore you'll be able to arrive at your answer. And therefore, I'm writing it down a1 is equal to let's say x, then a2 is equal to y. Because I'm looking for pattern emergence, I'm not writing down this x numbers, I'm writing something else. Now a3 is difference of the previous two terms for j greater than or equal to 3. So this will be y minus x. A4 will be equal to y minus x minus y or A4 will be minus x. A5 will be minus x minus y plus x or this will be equal to minus y or A6 will be minus y minus minus x or this will be x minus y or A7 will be x minus y minus minus y will be equal to x and this is when your brain should go off Ooh, i have got into x again i have got into x again after six terms repetition in value starts happening so let's look at only six terms these six terms for every x there is a minus x for every y there is a minus y for every y minus x there is also an x minus y can i say if i pick up any six consecutive terms I pick up any six consecutive terms in the sequence, the sum will be zero. So when they're asking me sum of the first 6002 terms, sum of first 6002 terms, 6000 terms are absolutely useless. I only need sum of two terms, the first two terms. What they're asking for is A1 plus A2. And the wonderful thing is they've given me the values of A1 and A2. A1 is 81.33, A2 is 19, so the difference or summation of them is 62.33, our answer is option C. Also, this series where terms start repeating after every iteration of 6 is a fairly popular series. I hope you have come across it in a lot of practice periods. Next question is another basic intelligence-based way of solving. A1 is equal to 1. A1 equal to 1. And An plus 1, but let's say A2 minus 3 times of A1 plus 2 should be equal to 4. But can I say A2 is equal to minus 3 plus 2, so minus 1. A2 is equal to 5. Now A3 minus 3 times of A2 plus 2 should be equal to 8. I'm simply utilizing this function. From here, I will get 15 more. How much is it? 3, 15 minus 13. So, A3 should be equal to 21. For additional work, let me do this also. A4 minus 3A3 plus 2 should be equal to 12. So A4 will be equal to minus 63 plus 2. So plus 61 plus 61 plus 12, 73. Good. We get to 72. Look at these numbers very carefully. Of course, this idea should stick. We are of course not looking to go up till 100 terms. We are of course not looking to go up till 100 terms. But using this, what comes to our aid is the options. Look at the options. If I'm looking for A100, if I'm looking for A100, these are the options. If I was looking for A3, what should my options look like? What should my options look like? 
should it be 3 raised to the power 3 minus 3 raised to the power 3 minus 2 into 3 according to option A. So if I was looking for A3, according to option A, see how these terms, this, oh, this is 3 raised to the power 9, sorry. Should be 3 raised to the power 2. 99 comes from 100 minus 1. So if I'm looking for A3, the power I've turned to 2, and this 200 comes from 2 into 100, 100th term. So 2 into 3 I have done. Option B will turn to again 3 square plus 2 into 3. Option C will turn to 3 raised to the power 3 minus 2 into 3. And option D will turn to 3 raised to the power 3 plus 2 into 3. Let's figure out what this is giving me. 9 minus 6 gives me 3. 9 plus 6 gives me 15. 27 minus 6 gives me 21. 27 plus 6 gives me 23. And you see, you had already calculated A3 to be 21, which is the only option that is giving me A3 in its finest form. It is option C. So answer to the question will be option C. Nobody expects you to go up until the 100th term. Nobody expects you to go up until the 100th term. This is known as smart substitution and is useful in a lot of questions. But of course, its uh, approach is limited to questions in which options are present. Questions in which options are not present, we will not be able to do this. You can, of course, oh, choose to... Uh, this can be rewritten. This can be, uh, let's say, worked out in a manner. This can be worked out in a manner in which you can get your answer. Let's see. This is 3 raised to the power 0 plus or minus into 0 general term to try to identify it is 3 raised to the power n minus 2 into n but because this series is indexed in nature it is 3 raised to the power n and one part is a gp one part is one part is a gp so there's, there's no gp at all 3 raised to the power n is a different series altogether 2 into n is a different series altogether Combining and coming up with the general term is going to be very difficult unless you use this substitution based idea. So this is the only one that I know. Maybe there is a technical way of solving, but what I know, this suffices in most situations. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Then. Let S be the sum of an arithmetic series. The arithmetic mean of every two consecutive terms with every three consecutive terms of S form consecutive terms of series S1 and S2 respectively. Sum of all the terms in S1 and in series S2 are 1375 and 690 respectively. Find the sum of all the terms in series S. Okay. Let's see. I have A1, A2 and A3. Okay, so the arithmetic mean of every two consecutive terms, arithmetic mean here will be a1 plus a2 by 2, arithmetic mean here will be a2 plus a3 by 2, and three consecutive terms, arithmetic mean of three consecutive terms should be a2. Okay, this is also told to us. If the sum of the terms in series 1 and series 2 are 1375, these two numbers add up to 1375. And this is 690 directly. Okay.
with this for good. I'm simply checking, simply checking if I can somehow scam my way into assuming only three terms and getting to my answer. If I can scam my way into assuming only three terms and getting to my answer. Let's see. If A2 is 690, then 690 into 3, if I'm looking for sum of all the terms of the series S, it will be 690 into 3, which will be 0070, which is not even present in options. So my scan will work. I would have to do it properly. So irritating. We will have A4, A5, A6, all the way up until A n minus 2, A n minus 1, A n. So many terms I'll have to write. Yeah. The arithmetic mean of every two consecutive terms and every three consecutive terms forms consecutive terms of the series S1 and S2. So S1 be A1 plus A2 divided by 2. Or I will write it as A1 by 2 plus A2 by 2. This is the first term. Second term will be A2 by 2 plus A3 by 2. The third term will be A3 by 2 plus A4 by 2. Yes, this has given me a good idea. I will keep on going up until, let's say for these two terms, A n minus 2 by 2 plus a n minus 1 by 2 and a n minus 1 by 2 plus a n by 2. Can you see if you look at these terms, each of the intermediate terms are coming in total, they are coming in full. Each of the intermediate terms are coming in full. What is only being missed out, the only thing that is being missed out is a1 by 2, a1 by 2 and a n by 2. Half of the first term and half of the last term. Half of the first term and half of the last term is being missed out here. So I can say this is equal to sum of all the terms, sum of all terms minus a1 plus a n by sum of all terms, which is sum of all terms minus a n a 1 plus a n by 2. Okay. Now let's look at S2. Let's look at S2. Then three, three terms are taken. For the first three terms, we will have a 2, a 1, a 2, a 3. We will have this. Next three terms, we will have a 3. The next terms, we will have a 4. Next, we will have a 5. And we'll keep on going up until the second last term, a n minus 1. Let's see, this will be important. What is missing? Everything is present here. What is missing? The two numbers that are missing are a 1 is missing and a n is missing. So can I say this is equal to sum of all terms of s minus a1 plus a n. This is sum of all terms of s minus a1 plus a n by 2. This is sum of all terms of s a1 plus a n. So, can I say, let me take sum of all terms of s as k, this also is k. So, I have a1 plus a n by 2 as d. So this will be d. So a minus d is equal to summation is given as 1, 3, 7, 5. k minus 2d is given as 6, 90. So I can do minus plus and minus. D will be equal to how much? 5 minus, so uh, this is 
five. Seventeen minus this is eight, and twelve minus six is six eighty five. If D is six eighty five, can I say K, which is sum of all terms of S, will be equal to one three seven five plus six eighty five. Let me give T here. So one three six is zero plus seven hundred or the final summation I reach is two zero six zero, which is indeed present in the options. Okay, manipulation has saved the day. See what I've done. This is series S. All the terms in series S. Now for series one, A one has come half times. A two has come half times here and half times here. This is uh, mean of the first two terms. This is mean of the second two terms. This is mean of the third and fourth term. So A two has come half times here, half times here. A three has come half times here, half times here. A4 has come half times here, half times here. All the terms in between, all the terms in between will come half time, half time twice, or they will come full times. Just A1 and AN will come half, half times. So, sum one, sum one will be sum of all terms of S. All the terms in the original AP are here, minus A1 by 2 and AN by 2. Just the a1 by 2 and an by 2, it will be missing. Otherwise, it will be equal to sum of all terms of s. Now, series 2, this is the arithmetic mean of three, three terms. So, a1, a2, a3, mean will be a2. a3, a, a2, a3, a4, mean will be a3. a3, a4, a5, mean will be a4. So on and so forth. Every term will come. The two terms that are missing are a1 and an. So, sum of s2 will be sum of all terms of s. Minus a1 plus a n, first term and last term, they are the only terms missing. Sum of all terms of S, oh, the only thing missing is the first term and the last term. Now see, I take sum of all terms as k. Sum of all terms of S is k. And a1 plus a n by 2, I have taken as d. k minus d, according to the question, sum of series S1 is 1375. A1 plus An, A1 plus An by 2 if I have taken D, A1 plus An will itself be 2D. A minus 2D gets me to 690, which is excellent, which is excellent because now this gives me, this gives me the ability to calculate the value of D and K both. This is the simultaneous system, simultaneous equation with two variables. This gives me the ability to calculate the value of K and D both. So K after all that processing will turn out to be 2060 and therefore should be the answer. Okay. Next question now. The infinite sum 1 plus 4 by 7 plus 9 by 7 square plus 16 by 7 cube plus 25 by 7 raised to the power 4 plus 36 by 7 raised to the power 5, so on and so forth. This is a quadratic AGP. This is a quadratic AGP. On normal AGP, everyone pretty much knows. This is AGP for, for a quadratic AGP. So, how we go about solving it is, first we put down, let the sum be equal to this. Then we multiply everything by the common ratio. So 7, we get S by 7 equal to 1 by 7 plus 4 by 7 square plus 9 by 7 cube plus 16 by 7 raised to the power 4 plus 25 by 7 raised to the power 5. So the difference turns out to be 6 by 7 S. 6 by 7 s is equal to 1 plus 3 by 7 plus 5 by 7 square plus 7 by 7 cube plus 9 by 7 raised to the power 4 plus 11 by 7 raised to the power 5 blah 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 blah. Now again, we multiply this by 7, we get 6 by 49 s 
six by forty-nine s is equal to one by seven plus three by seven square plus how much? Five by seven cube plus nine by seven raised to the power. It's not nine. Seven by seven raised to the power four plus nine by seven raised to the power five. Blah 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 blah. I think I'm going to go into additional space. Now, the difference of these two, your S minus S by 7 is 6 by 7, be 42 by 49, 40. so 36 by 49 S will be equal to 1 plus 2 by 7 plus 2 by 7 square plus 2 by 7 cube plus 2 by 7 raised to the power 4 plus 2 by 7 raised to the power 5, blah, 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 blah. Now we can process this even nicer. You can take it. 1 plus, the first term is 1 by 7. And the common ratio is also 1 by 7. So 1 minus 1 by 7, which will then be 1 plus 1 by 6. Sorry, 1 plus 2 by 6, what will be 4 by 3, 4 by 3, so 36 by 49 S is equal to 4 by 3, cancel, cancel, it's equal to 9, S is equal to 49 by 27, and this will be the final answer. The good thing about such questions is, if you know the steps, you will definitely get to the answer. The sad thing about this question is, there is no smart way of handling this. You have to go through all these steps. You have to go through all these sequences. You have to go through all these workings in order to arrive at the answer. There is no smart way of reaching that. So ideally, if I was attempting this in an exam, I would most likely be attempting this towards the end of the paper when I have seen all other questions. Just because I know how to do this, this will not take up my initial few moments of solving. And the last question in the sheet. Look at this. A sequence of numbers is written in the following fashion. One. This is the first number. Second number. Third number. Fourth number. Fifth number. Sixth number. Sixth number. Sixth number. Seventh number, eighth number, ninth number, tenth number, eleventh number, twelfth number, so on and so forth. A sequence of number is written in the following fashion. One, seven, one, 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 seven, each repeated once. One, one, seven, seven, each repeated twice. One, 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 seven, 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 each repeated three times. If I were to continue this series, one, one. Seven, 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 and this will be thirteenth number, eighth number, eighth number, sixteenth number, seventeenth number, eighteenth number, nineteenth number, and twentieth number. Okay. Now I'm just seeing. I'm just saying you can uh, see it in two different ways. Either look at where is one starting or where is seven starting. If you can somehow form a series, where is one starting? I have one. The spots where one is starting in this new groups. One, three, seven, then thirteen. You can perhaps see there is a series indeed for the two ka gap, four ka gap. 6 ka gap. This series can be identified. Problem at all. Most definitely something can be done. When does 1 start? You can identify. Let us look at where does 7 start. It starts at digit 2 or number 2. Then at 5. Then at 10. Then at 17. And this is interesting. 
So if you look at these numbers, this is one square plus one. This is square plus one. This is three square plus one. This is how much? Three square plus one. This has given me the series or the starting point of seven. Starting point of seven. Starting point of sevens is right after a perfect square. Right after a perfect square. Now, see this wonderful thing. What is the value of T 5040, 5042, 5044, and 5046? I'm checking if there is a perfect square somewhere in between. 70 square I know to be 4900. 70 square I know to be 4900. So, can I say 4901 will be where a 7 comes in? And how many times? See, when it starts at this point, 1 square plus 1, it has come once. When it is coming at 2 square plus 1, when it is coming after 2 square, when it starts at the 5th spot, it is coming twice. 2 square, 2 times. 3 square, 3 times. 4 square, 4 times. So when it is 70 square plus 1, can I say from 4901 to 4970, this will all be 7s. This will all be 7s. From 4901 to 4970, it will all be sevens. When does and after this, this will be seventy sevens. What seventy sevens? After this, I will have seventy one ones. So from four nine seven zero. So from four nine seven one to five zero four one, I will have seventy one ones. From four nine seven one. To 5041, I will have 71 ones. And from 5042, from 5042, 79 further, 71 further, I will have to go. 71, 5042 plus 5041 plus 71 will be 5112. In this range, I will have 71 sevens. And this is all the work I need to do for this question. We just look at term 5040. It will lie in this range. So this will be equal to 1. Look at the term here. 5042. This will be a 7. 5044 will lie in this range. This will be a 7. 5046 will lie in this range. It will be a 7. So I get 1 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. I get a total of 22 or the correct answer to this question will be option D. And that is the entirety of questions for this week. We have done all sorts of fun questions, partial fractions, AGP, quadratic, quadratic series, simple APGP working, middle term identification, removal of numbers from within a series, all sorts of fun questions are included. Hopefully you learned something, hopefully this was something that benefited you with revision or at least to highlighting some things that you need to cover. That will be all for this week. See you again next week now. Thank you.